you're not just making it compulsory to use the BVAS, IRF, RBs, and all of these things. Um, what Nigeria has been doing is what I call a major national experimentation. If you look at the PR strategy they used to market, and I'll use market advisedly, they used to market the smart card reader. That's if, uh, in 2015? Yes, they said the smart card reader is a game changer. If you Google it, you will still see newspaper reports mm. telling Nigerians. But it did change the game. Well, we will look, we will look into that uh, yeah. shortly. Mm -hmm. And then today they tell you Bivas is also a game changer. And I don't have issues with these things. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is major national experimentation. What you're supposed to do, if you have gotten a device or devices, you ask yourself, what is the goal of this device? To improve the electoral outcome, to improve the credibility of the process. And then you subject those systems and the processes around the systems to audits and integrity tests. Mm -hmm. Why do you do these things? To determine the vulnerability of those systems, the, the ability of those systems to be corrupted by individuals. You subject it to those tests because in computing, there is something that is called human interaction with systems. If you have designed a system that is foolproof and you give it to an individual that can corrupt it, that system has it achieved its purpose? The answer is no. So when you are designing systems, you design processes in mind. And so when INEC comes up with ABIS, any system at all, Nigerians should investigate the system. Nigerians should be interested in auditing the system, seeing all the fault lines. Passing through strenuous stress test. Yes, it's only when you have ad achieved this. Mm. Card reader did not do that. That was why we didn't know that incident forms would be the undoing of card reader. Mm. And then now you have abyss. In fact, what I believe is that Nigerian politicians are just so brazen. If they are not brazen, what we know about these devices, there are smart ways to technically compromise these systems without using it on the surface. It's just that Nigerian politicians like being brazen about election theft. If not, the way your devices are, people can smartly override the election system without you even knowing. I'll give you one instance, and this is the first time I'm saying it on a national platform. I neck went around the country telling Nigerians that they have what they call abyss. Automated biometric identification system. Mm. And first to clearly looked at the camera and told Nigerians that Abbey's system will weed out ghost voters, will automatically clean up the voting register, mm. will clean out multiple registrants on the age. You remember that he made those claims. I can tell you today we are sitting in your studio. INEC does not have one line of code, one smartphone, one phone anywhere called Abyss. What INEC did was that INEC gives an individual that we will leave unnamed for now uh, details of Nigerians in a hard drive. And the guy traveled to Israel, went to Israel and stayed for two weeks and came back and told INEC that they have cleaned up the system. And then INEC uploaded that thing on their website. And Nigerians reported 55,000 names. And then INEC took that Some of them underaged. Nigerians, ni today that voter register is still dirty. You have to look at it. And so I'm telling you on your platform, INEC does not have abyss. And we knew this before the elections. And we told stakeholders, INEC does not have abyss. If INEC is lying about abyss, what other things do we not know about the systems? And then we started investigating the electronic devices. If I tell you the several vulnerabilities of this thing you call... But it, we have the beavers that work the there. The beavers? Um, uh, about 98, if not more percent, <laughs> uh, during the last general election. But it was called to question in this last governorship election, where the beavers was clearly bypassed, based on uh, what we can glean from uh, the IREF. We've seen results there, still existing in IREF, where, for instance, in some constituencies in... Uh, Kogi said, for instance, 115 accredited by Beavers, but result posted of about 600. So how do we begin to gauge the performance of Beavers in accreditation and more importantly, stopping over voting? What Nigerians don't know is that there is something called synchronization of the Beavers. Synchronization of the Beavers is not written on INEC guidelines. But INEC knows that it does synchronization. And the synchronization means that Beavers can give you reports. Okay, where you will see synchronization in full effect is an Ocean election. If you have followed Ocean Election Petition Tribunal, mm. I think there was overvoting in 774 or something local government, 744 local governments. By the time I, the Beavers synchronized, mm. you had overvoting in just, I think, at 16 or so mm. local government. You remember? Yes, sir. That was why the two dissenting leading mm. judgments and dissenting judgments had that issue. So the synchronization of the Beavers is a very fuzzy process. It is not clearly spout out. So the beavers can be made to say 2 in the morning and 3 in the afternoon. And you don't want to leave that to so vulnerability. The, the it was just are not constant? It was just, just exploited in 2023 general elections. That was why you could say that it functioned. If it's exploited any time, beavers can be made to say anything the politicians wanted to say. That's one of the vulnerabilities. The other vulnerability you see in the beavers is that the beavers does not measure its own success or failure. The beavers does not connect to internet in real time 
for voter authentication. So, which means that any beaver... So, he's on the spot as preloaded information. Preloaded. Pre yes. So, you see that the beavers that will be sent to your polling units, if you had 230 voters in your polling unit, they will load the information of 230 voters in your polling unit. If I want to have your polling unit, I know that I will not win in your polling unit. I will load the information of 200 people who are not members, who are not voters in your polling unit, and add 30 voters who are in your polling unit that day. 200 people will not be able to vote. You only record 30 votes in that polling unit. That's the vulnerability of the system. And there, you, there are several technical ways so we, we have to make the beavers uh, real-time online in such a way as uh, that if there's an accreditation going on at the uh, end server or control station of INEC, they should monitor these processes as they go. The, the technical side, since elections have gone technical or technological, Nigerians must invest in that. The old approach of having your party agents sit around, milling around in quote-unquote coalition centers, whereas things are done digitally. Who is the representative of any party in those digital in the server room? Mm -hmm. None. Yeah, I next said they won't give access. <laughs> and I, I was one of those that com campaigned that uh, representatives of parties should be invited. To for transparency a, and openness. To take a look at, okay, mm. what happened on the presidential election day? Mm. Several stories are flying around. One of them is that the server was shut down and the IP was rerouted. Mm. And that was why you see that you could upload senatorial results, you could upload House of Reps results, but you couldn't upload um, a res election results of presidential election on the end. Something happened, and then there is no agent in the room where it happened. And so you have to redesign, not just the processes, but then... And there's been no official explanation till for today, my neck, till months today, after that? Not even any apologies. What they are asking you to do is to go to court. And these are some of the vulnerabilities which we should have seen before the elections. Thankfully, we have several off-cycle elections, I think in Anambra, in Oshun State, um, Edo, Edo State, Ondo uh, State. State, rather. Yeah. And, and then, that 2024, we'll have uh, Edo and Ondo then. Beautiful. Uh, 2025, Anambra, Anambra comes in. So you have these three elections, and I'm inviting Nigeria politicians. Mm -hmm. Don't just sit back. Invest in the process. Don't sit back and start pasting posters in 2026 against 2027.